So they say a shoemaker actually wears the worst shoes, meaning that the very principles that you normally preach are the ones that you don't follow. So today we're going to discuss some of the basics in terms of what is healthy nutrition, what is healthy habits that you can follow, training, especially if you're actually living a 24-hour day like most of the viewers on this channel are doing. Um, we're going to discuss that. We're going to unpack that a little bit on today's episode. Welcome if this is the very first time that you are joining us on Money and Medicine. You're welcome to check out our website and some of the content, some of the interviews that we've did. And uh, we've got Jesse Pretorius right up next. <laughs> So, JC, welcome. Um, we're very excited to be having you on our podcast. I think it's been overdue. We've, we've had that discussion for, for some time now. Um, I think from my side, it's just, who is JC Pretorius? How did you grow up? Um, where are you from originally? And sort of like, what got you into, into the, the healthy habits of training and, and eating healthy? Yeah, well, guys, thank you very much for having me. Thank I awesome. appreciate it. So, actually, it was... Born, bred, everything in the area here, about two k's away, Trinity House down the road. So I went to school there. It was a very a relatively small school. It was co-ed, so you know the pool of athletes and sportsmen was very small. So fortunately, I was able to kind of be at the top level of you know the other sportsmen. Maybe not if I went to like a JP or Pretoria Boys or those kind of schools, but at Trinity it was kind of relatively easy to be one of the better players, in mostly rugby. Cricket I kind of just did for fun, so obviously I grew up more, you know, rugby, athletics and doing all of that, and being, you know, in a small school where you get the praise for doing certain things, it kind of motivates you to continue and make decisions to continue to get that praise. So, you know, go to gym because, oh, okay, no, Jesse's the fastest. Let's, okay, no, I want to <laughs> stay the fastest. Yeah, yeah. Jesse scores the most tries and I want to stay the person that's scoring the most tries. So I think from that, I kind of just said, well, I'm already doing the rugby training. I'm doing all the training. Let me maybe just go to gym because that's something maybe the other kids aren't doing. Okay. So I would say I was, I was pretty young. I was about 12 years old. I went to gym. I always grew up going to gym with my dad, but more swimming and that kind of stuff, maybe on the weekends before I was 12. Then I was 12. Then I probably went about four or five times a week. A lot of people said, you know, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. You could stunt your growth. But at the end of the day, I'm taller than my dad. So <laughs> yeah. I'll just say I'd never stunted my growth. You know? So <laughs> continuously going to the gym from, you know, 12 years to 18 years old, doing that for, for um, sport. Then I went to varsity. Rugby became far a bit too serious for me okay. in school because I, uh, I played for a Lions team when I was 16 and then I was playing for the first team and then my under-16 team. So it was three different teams I was playing for. Sure. So it was just too much for me at the time. I'm 16 years old, I'm trying to pass school as well. I, d I enjoyed rugby, but I didn't love it you know, to the extent that I wanted to be a professional yeah, athlete. Sure, yeah. So doing you know, two, two sessions, three sessions a day was a bit much when I was 16 years old. So that mm. put me off rugby. And then I got into competing and the bodybuilding. So I did my first show when I was in matric, okay. or my first two shows when I was in matric. So I, I remember now you know, writing math paper one, having an hour break, going to my car, eating my hake and broccoli, and then going back and then writing, you know, paper two. So that, Insane, that's, yeah. those are the memories I have from when I was in matric. And that obviously grew into varsity when I started competing properly. And then fortunately, I was, I, I always say lucky enough to win my pro card. But whatever, you know, people's views on if I was deserving or not, I did get my pro card when I was 19. So that was the first year of varsity. Okay. And from that, I kind of just, you know, had people messaging me, asking me, do you help and give guidance on diets and training and all of that? And I, and I got all these messages. I thought, well, why not? Why aren't I doing this? So I did a course through TriFocus. Mm -hmm. Not that I really learned anything, to be honest. Yes. A lot of it was very outdated and not really in terms of bodyboarding or competing or, you know, that, that aspect. Yeah. So then I started that. And in second year, I started, you know, selling diet plans, selling training plans, assisting people with, you know, whatever their health journey was. I helped them with that. And then from there... You know, the, the online training aspect kind of just grew. And because I was studying, it stayed online. I never really went to gym and met people and helped them. I did do that once or twice, but it wasn't for me. I learned no. quickly that, you know, you can service 10 people a day, 
by yeah. sitting behind your computer, not having to meet them face to face, or you can serve as four or five people a day because you know that's your hour yeah. each, yeah. and it's very limited and it's not really scalable. Whereas the yeah. online is a lot more scalable. So I did that, and yeah, th- so that business is you know it's been going since I was twenty. Okay, it's still yes. going strong. Yeah, fortunately. Oh, that's great, Jess. So one of the things that you mentioned that actually stood out is you said you played you played rugby. Um, which I think most of us can relate to. And you were sort of like, I want to say forced into playing rugby because that's sort of like a peer thing. So mm. most of your peers are playing rugby, especially in a, in a, in a smaller school. Um, you sort of like the go-to guy um, in terms of passing just the ball and you get the shine. And then you lost, not that love for rugby, but you sort of like grew out of rugby and you moved into like personal training. I also know that um, the last year or two, you've started running a lot. So... Would you say that it can happen that someone would lose motivation in a certain area of training? Um, and I think that's the lovely thing about sports and the lovely thing about training is, is you, you're never fixed in one. So I'm, I'm taking myself as an example. I used to love gym and I still do go to the gym, but I'm not as hectic in a certain uh, program that I used to be. And I've, I've, I've you know, started doing some combat sports on the side as well. Um, and for longevity purposes, do you think that is maybe a good strategy to follow if you are somebody that's, let's say, a medical doctor, you've studied, you had a bit of flexibility, now all of a sudden you're an intern, you don't have that flexibility, and now you maybe need to look at other ways that you can find uh, to still stay healthy and still train, but maybe just follow a different suit. Um, what kept you motivated during that time to, and, and, and how did you find different hobbies in terms of training? Yeah, I think, you know, staying motivated motivation fluctuates it changes one day motivated one day you're not i think it was maybe more having a dad from the who was in the military it was more he implemented discipline in my life so it wasn't motivation that carried me it was almost the discipline of just whatever you do today is how you're going to do everything else for the rest of your life you know how how i conduct myself in this podcast is how i'm going to conduct myself in the future how i you know do a medial task is how I'm going to do a difficult task. So it's kind of just saying, well, this is what it is. And if I want to <coughs> be healthy or if I want to look better or if I want to, you know, whatever your goals are, mm. it kind of just comes to, well, if I don't do it, no one's going to do it for me. So I think, you know, in terms of, you know, an intern, if they obviously now are very limited with time, you can't expect to be able to go and do, you know, let's say, an hour at the gym in the morning and then still go in the evening and that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, as a student, you might have had more time. So I think it, you kind of need to look at if you want it bad enough. Yeah. You know, if you truly want to be healthier, you will do it. Maybe you're going to obviously have to make other sacrifices yeah. in life. You're going to have to maybe watch a little bit less TV in the evening or you're going to have to, you know, it doesn't mean you have to go every single day. Yeah. You can go, you know, three times a week. It can be 30 minutes, three times a week. Yeah. Most people, no matter the job, has 30 minutes a day, three times a week to be able to go and exercise. So I think it kind of comes down to if you're willing to make those changes, then you kind of just have to. And it's, you know, it sacrifices in life. Mm. Uh, you know you're going into medicine that there's going to be tons of sacrifices in your life that you're going to have to make with this job. You're going to have to, you know, sacrifice family time. You're going to sacrifice friends. You're going to sacrifice a lot of stuff because of the nature of the work. Mm. So I think you're going to have to also make other sacrifices in terms of, you know, I used to, let's say, you know, you work a 12-hour shift. Maybe you're going to have to get a little bit less sleep or you're going to have to, you know, go straight. You go to the gym bef- as you wake up. And then, you know, maybe have a meal instead of then going out for breakfast and seeing this person, seeing that because you're working or not. So I think it kind of just comes down to are you willing to, you know, do certain things to benefit yourself and to benefit your health and obviously benefit your career? Because the healthier you are, the better you're going to be able to be on your feet all day, the better you're going to be able to be in terms of positivity, seeing patients and all of that. Mm. So, Jess, we, um, a lot of the first year interns specifically, um, we've seen struggle with mental health. Um, and I think it's because of the, the workload. Um, it's a new environment. They, they have very busy schedules. Um, also, I think the government structure is uh, of such nature where there's expected a, a lot more of them than just being uh, able to perform their daily occupational tasks. Um, how important is, is healthy um, habits um, and training, as an example, for, for mindset? 
Yeah, I think that's a big thing. Obviously, f- initially, in terms of training the endorphins and the positive you know, chemicals yes. that are released in your body, that's obviously one thing which will help because exercise in, is an antidepressant in itself. Sure. But I think in terms of discipline, in terms of you know, creating those habits, if you have a to-do list and you check, tick off everything that's on your to-do list, you feel more positive, you feel like you've accomplished something, you feel like True. you know there's something, okay, cool, I've done something today, so it makes you more happy. Obviously, it's very difficult with doctors because you're seeing, let's just say, you know, you're seeing sick people, you're seeing patients that are hurt, you're seeing, yeah. it's a very, it can be a very negative environment if you're not obviously accustomed to it. So I think maybe just having a little bit of structure and discipline away from, you know, being, well, obviously while you're working, maybe have a more structured way of eating. But when you f- fulfill those requirements or those, you know, tasks that you set yourself, then it can obviously help, you know, create more of a positive mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, I think for, um, you know, to build on that and to add on to the sustainability that we spoke about earlier, some of the clients that you've dealt with, which ones are more successful? Because what, what I normally see is sometimes you watch a motivational, you know, movie and you train for 30 days and you're all hyped. And then after that, you sort of like, you don't create that discipline. You know, I think they say what it, it takes 30 days or 45 days or 40 days or something to create a yeah. habit. Um but let's say we, we see a lot of people, they're motivated for two weeks, even in their finances, they like budgeting for that first month. And then after that, they sort of like just fall back into their normal habits. Um, would you say it's a little bit maybe just to start off with, maybe say, well, let's commit for three days of healthy eating, you know, creating healthy habits, focusing on mindset, going to the gym, opposed to doing a hectic schedule for six days a week and going like a crash course and sometimes you obviously see the results quicker, which might motivate some people opposed to uh, the former. Um, based on your experience with clients, what what are those, between those two methods, which you say is most is more successful? Yeah, I think you need to be honest with yourself and you need to, if you've always been someone that's been disciplined and been hardworking in terms of, you know, the pleasure, obviously all doctors and someone that's qualified is hardworking because you have to be hardworking in terms of the studying. But people need to look at themselves and say, okay, well, I've always had a problem with what I've eaten or the decisions I've made. So, you know, let's just say you have a liter of Coke every day. Maybe just cut out the Coke. Mm. You don't have to drastically change every single thing that you're doing. Maybe just do small little things. Okay, well, with, you know, that 10 minute break I got there quickly, I usually every day have a Coke. Maybe get a Coke Zero. Then maybe another day, you know, add don't add sugar into your coffee. Maybe just add sweetener. So it, yeah. it doesn't always have to be, you know, a complete change. I think depending on the person, you kind of just need to be honest with yourself and say, okay, well, I know if I had to go cold turkey, in three days I'm just going to fall off the rails and then it's probably going to be even worse. So maybe just mm-hmm. look at who you are as a person, your capabilities, and just, you know, intrinsically see how far you can go in terms of the amount of changes you're going to make. And uh, it also, I mean, it does, depending on your goals, depending on also obviously the amount of changes you would need to make, but you don't always have to be eating, you know, egg whites and broccoli. And, you know, there's a lot of variation within food that can be exceptionally healthy. And you can obviously make, I mean, if you're having, let's just say a liter of Coke a day or even, you know, 300 mils or whatever, by not having that Coke, you're eating 300 or consuming 300 calories less. Mm. So that's already going to make a difference. And that compounded over a week is going to be drastic. So Massive. if you can just make small changes and small decisions, it doesn't have to be those drastic changes. No. So just something that I've also picked up along the lines while we're having this conversation is um, the importance maybe of, of preparation. Um, because you mm. mentioned earlier, um, even if you've got, just got 30 minutes in a day, um, you can make time to go to, tra- um, to for training. As an example, maybe be- go before work or after work. Um, and if you pack your gym bag, as an example, if you want to go to the gym, um, j- which is just one form of training, um, it's maybe always advisable to have that, that bag in, in, uh, in your car because then you go straight to the gym as opposed to first going home, yes. then relaxing, and then it's easy to get out of it because now mm-hmm. you're at home going to sit on the couch for a bit. Very difficult to pick yourself then up to, to actually get there. Um, but also from, from a, f- um, a, a meal plan perspective, um, you've dealt with plenty of clients um, and the importance of, pre- of prepping. Um, how important is that to, to stick to those goals? Yeah, I think it's obviously it's definitely, it's greatly important because 
especially in terms of an intern, obviously you've just started out. It's not like you have tons of money. So if you have made these meals, you've cooked them, you've got them, you can't exactly, you know, all the time just be like, okay, well, I actually don't feel like that. Let me go quickly get something from the cafeteria. Mm. So because you've made them, because they're there, obviously then <coughs> you're, obviously you're more inclined to have that meal. And then in terms of, you know, if you are an intern, you're working these long hours, if you haven't prepared, what option do you have other than maybe getting Uber Eats to deliver or going to the cafeteria or anything? So you're almost destined to fail without preparation. So, you know, you can, on a, I don't know, obviously depending on their schedule, but depending and when they've got even just two hours, cook lots of chicken as an example. It doesn't have to obviously be chicken, mm -hmm. but cook lots of meat, lots of uh, Lots of carbs and, you know, the fats, obviously, it's easier to prepare on the day because it's just yeah. opening up a, a packet of nuts or whatever. Yeah. But you can freeze the rice, you can freeze the chicken, and you can just put it in little, you know, portions that you say, okay, cool, today I'm out, you know, 12-hour shift, I'm going to take these four meals. Yeah. And then you take that with you, and then it's, it's prepared, and it's prepared, so you don't want to waste the food and, you know, waste the money. Mm. No, and Stefan, I think also maybe um, to bring the finance side into this is... Um, I think if you prepare meals like that, over the long run, it might actually work out cheaper mm -hmm. as opposed to not preparing. Because we've seen it quite often where um, these doctors are very busy. They haven't prepared anything because they haven't had the time to prepare anything. Um, so it's very easy to go to the cafeteria or to, to buy um, or to just go onto your app, buy Mr. D food or go onto Uber Eats. They come and deliver that meal. But before you know it, um, that all adds up. So mm -hmm. initially, I think it might be... Um, it might look like it's very expensive if you have to go to any grocery store, buy go buy all of the bulk chicken, bulk bulk rice or carbs, depending on what you like and prefer. Um, so it might look like a big expense at that specific moment in time. Mm. But I think if you look at it over a, a month in your budget, it might be more cost effective to actually prepare those meals because you won't, won't be ordering takeout, as an yeah. example. Yeah, and, and I think to add to that as well, if you take Uber Eats, Mr. Delivery, as an example, and you see the actual fee on top of what you're actually paying for the meal, just for transport, yeah. it's like 30, 40%. And I think yeah. it's obviously to do now with the new fuel prices and hikes and, and, and the, the situation we find ourselves in. Yeah. Um, but that's a very good point because sometimes you see that capital expenditure in the beginning of the month for the prepping, um, opposed to that ongoing small little bits of I'm just gonna, and if you had a, a long day, let's say you had a, you know, you were on call and you get back home, I doubt that you still have I don't know, the energy to stop and buy yourself something. So most probably you will go back home and you will order yeah. um, Mr. Delivery and Uber so Eats. I was, I was actually looking at it um, the past weekend. Um, so I was uh, just lazy to, to go to Romans to actually go there and pick up a, a pizza. So I decided to do it on, on Mr. D. Um, and I was quite surprised to see what the, the delivery fee is. But apart from the delivery fee, they also give you an option to, to put a tip. Okay, So you can even do 5%, 10%, 15%. Now... I'm, I'm battling in my head whether I'm going to give a tip or not, but I'm so embarrassed by not giving, giving a tip it, because yeah. if the, if the, if the um, delivery guy is going to come and deliver that pizza to me and there's no tip, you will know it. Um, so what you end up adding a tip as well. Mm. Now, that's just one event, okay? Um, so you can maybe basically convince yourself, like, I'm going to um, be prepared to pay this extra <laughs> fee just for convenience. But I think in the medical spaces where if you haven't prepared a meal and you are at the hospital, you don't have an option. You have to basically um, get someone like that to come and deliver to you. And all of those additional fees um, that's not necessarily food related directly to the product that you've ordered um, adds up quite, quite a lot. Um, yeah. Jason, how important is nutrition? Because I think sometimes we always talk about training. Um, we always talk about healthy habits. But we overlook nutrition, and I'm and I'm speaking for myself here. Like you thought you had a very great session in the morning. Ah, you can have something small on the side, or maybe have a cheat meal that day. You know how important is nutrition, and also how important is something like sleep? Because in your internship, that you might be sleep derived. We've seen that quite often as well, and that's maybe just part of their situation. I know you run various businesses. I know you have a hectic schedule. How do you how do you manage you know your sleeping cycle and my first question is just in terms of the nutrition, how important is that? Well, in terms of nutrition, you know, people maybe overlook certain things and, you know, the aspects of how healthy fats can improve, you know, your mental function. And as someone, obviously, that's dealing with a life and death situation, you obviously need to be functioning at your optimal level. So healthy fats 
help your brain function better. Healthy fats help your hormones, you know, regulate your hormones properly. So there's lots of things in food mm. that taking away in terms of fat loss and all of that, but in terms of the functionality of food and how it can improve your performance on an everyday life, you know, that's greatly important. And if you look at overconsumption of sugar, that can increase inflammation and increase inflammation will make you more lethargic. If you're on your feet the whole day, it swells up your joints, your knees might be more sore. That obviously then might make you more negative and having a more negative. So it all, it obviously it's like a domino effect. The better you look after your, your health in terms of what you're eating also has an impact on your mental state, also has an impact on, you know, your emotions. It also has an impact on how functional you can be, how quickly you can think about something. And it's greatly important. It's, it's always fundamental to focus on, you know, essentially the fundamentals of food, the fundamentals and the building blocks of, because let's just take away, let's talk about takeaways. If you look at takeaways, because it's made very quickly and obviously at mass scale, it's difficult for them to make it in a healthy way. So if you look at fries, how many people's fries have been cooked in that same oil until they've replaced it? 100%. How many, and that's, that's, uh, that's a fat, but it's not a healthy fat. Mm. And that's a, you know, so when you talk about cholesterol, people always thought, you know, any type of fat is a bad fat. There's so many different types of fats that are good for you, so many different types of fats that are bad for you. So looking at those building blocks and what you put in your body can affect you know, your day-to-day -day life. So you have to focus on not just in terms of weight loss, but in terms of how you can perform because of the food. And then, you know, nutrition, we've all heard the saying, you can't out-train a bad diet. And it's, a, and it's obviously doctors would understand the concept of energy, you know, what you put in your body, what you're burning, what you're consuming compared to, you know, your expenditure. So yeah. if you are eating more than you're burning in a day, there's going to be a surplus and that surplus needs to be stored somewhere and it's most likely going to be stored as fat. Yeah. So you can't out-train a bad diet. Obviously, you can out-train a bad diet in terms of if you only have a burger in a day and you're still working all day and then exercising, you can technically out-train that bad diet, but internally you're not going to be as healthy because of the chemicals and, yeah, you know, the yeah. way the things are produced. So you you need to look at what you're eating, why you're eating it, when you're eating it, because it's not only going to maybe not allow you to lose weight, but it's also going to maybe make you not think properly, think clearly and be as functional. True. I was reading, a, I can't, I would lie to you if I tell you the exact numbers, but it was something where in terms of weight loss now, if you sleep eight hours a day, so all these people were eating the same amount of calories. So let's just say it's 2,000 to make it a round number. All these people eating 2,000 calories a day. There was a group that got eight hours of sleep and there was a group that got five hours of sleep. And the group that got five hours of sleep didn't lose, well, the group that got eight hours of sleep lost, it was something drastic, like 50% more weight than sure. the people that got five hours of sleep. And that obviously also just shows how your body needs to be able to sleep and needs to be able to rest mm -hmm. to just burn fat. Mm -hmm. So you're actually doing nothing, but in sleeping and helping your body recover, it enables your ability to burn fat. So that's obviously important in terms of weight loss, in terms of you know energy levels. We all know how important sleep is <coughs> for energy, but also everybody's different. So, some people function on more sleep, some people you know, feel more tired sometimes with yeah. the, the more they sleep. So I know, you know, I, I function pr probably best on about six to seven hours of sleep. Some days if I get eight, nine hours sleep, I actually feel more tired. Oh, so it's, so it's, so all, it's all person dependent. But also in terms of your mental state, yeah. Yeah, that's sleep true. is very important because you, when you're more tired, you might have less energy to deal with something that you have to deal with, which makes you more negative, which makes you, you know, more abrasive, what makes you not have manners and that can obviously also there's that domino effect oh. again so fat loss obviously it's greatly important to have sleep in terms of energy levels important oh. in terms of you know knowing that okay well i'm going to be working for 12 hours now on call i at least need to have slept half of that yeah, yeah and i think it's a difficult it's a very difficult time to uh, thing to manage as well is oh. to get in enough sleep especially um with, with medical doctors um busy working because they work on shifts. So I think a lot of the time, 
um, you work a, a, a 20 or a, a 30 hour shift, um, then you get home, then you should actually prioritize sleep to recover mm. and to be ready for the next day. But then you also have a lot of personal stuff to do. Mm. Um, and I think before you before you find yourself, you've been on your phone, maybe you watch TV, and you could have actually used that time to, to sleep. Mm, uh, so I think it's a very difficult thing to manage, but you have to basically prioritize that and think I about think, it. Yeah, I think that's also where that discipline or you know that motivation comes in where, yeah, I've been working for 30 hours. I could... This new series came out. I could watch it so that you know I can talk about it with other people, or yeah. I could maybe just get a bit more sleep and yeah. be able to function better and be more healthy. Yeah, yeah. Jason, then um, just very obviously we can discuss, we can we can um, talk about this for quite some time. But a couple of tips for someone that wants to eat healthy but on a budget, because there's always there's there's also that stigma that. Obviously, healthy food is, is more expensive than less healthy food. Um, but if we're working on a budget and in turn watching this this podcast, this episode, what are some of the basics that that, that person can apply uh, to stay within their budget? Well, I think you need to look at in terms of the amount you're eating. So fortunately, and people have become more accustomed to this and understanding, obviously not a calorie is a calorie. So, you know, a calorie from sugar is not the same as a calorie from a a potato. Obviously, the sugar is going to not be as positive and beneficial for you. But you can be relatively flexible in what you eat and still be able to see goals in your physique. So you can still buy things like, you know, bread. And you can still have things like bread and peanut butter and, you know, Certain things that are, you know, usually cheaper yeah. and still see those results. So it's all about maybe just being absolutely conscious about what you're having yeah. and absolute and conscious on, you know, this is what I'm putting in my body and maybe, you know, even jotting it down in a journal or, you know, my fitness pal is such a great app where it tells you the calories and absolutely everything. Yeah. And it takes 30 seconds to quickly just type in the thing that you're eating. So you can still, you know, buy certain things that are cheaper that maybe have been stigmatized as something that shouldn't be in a diet. But you can have, you know, obviously things have, certain things have got more expensive, certain things haven't, like the price of eggs is also shot up and sometimes it's not super expensive, but other times it is. But, you know, even if you're having... Every second day you allow us, you can have two eggs on toast. Mm. That can still be healthy, obviously, just depending on what you have later. And that's not a very expensive meal. You know, it's like a 20 rand meal max, you know, Mm. if you have two eggs on two pieces of toast. So you can still feed yourself in a certain way where you can still have those foods that have been stigmatized as bad that people might enjoy and think, I can't have toast. What are you talking about? You can actually still have toast and lose weight. So there's certain things that are not completely have to be avoided uh, actually the the most healthy thing is portraits the most absolutely healthy thing on a budget is portraits even the one in like the chili or sure, the tomato sauce sure. so that that's the thing that's highest in omega-3 and obviously we know omega-3 also helps with mental function so having something like portraits you can i mean there's zero prep time in that all you do is you take the can to work obviously it's not always the ni- the nicest yeah. tasting thing that's what i wanted to say <coughs> I think it's not always the nicest thing to eat. Yeah. yeah depending on your taste as well. Um, but I, I, I've, I went through a stage where I had a lot of poachers and I think, it po- I, don't, I can't tell you exact, maybe like 18 rand for a price of poachers now. And it's about 400 grams. All you do is you take the, the can. You can take, obviously it's not always nice to be opening up a can of poachers, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're getting an amazing meal at cost. And sometimes it is just those sacrifices if you do want to be healthy and still, you know, lose weight. But also, it's also just about where you shop as well. You know, you don't have to go to Woolworths. You you don't have to go to even checkers or pick and pay. You can find a local butchery that maybe makes, you know, when you buy in bulk, chicken costs 69 rand a kilogram as opposed to 130 rand from Woolworths. So there's certain decisions that you can make in places that you can go that will be more beneficial. You can go to a you know a fruit and veg shop and mm. get i was actually this past weekend i was i saw it was you know two containers of blueberries was 28 rand whereas you go to Woolworths, that's like 50 rand for one container of blueberries yeah. so it's also just about where you go where you shop and you can you know still buy expensive healthy food at a reduced rate buy you know maybe one of these short short uh, smaller places yeah i think also you mentioned eggs i think looking for supplementary uh, 
protein as an example, because I think protein is one of the most expensive sort yeah. of um, categories of a healthy diet. If you just look at the price of meat and how that skyrocketed, um, if you find supplementary protein, something like eggs, maybe that's maybe a little bit cheaper if you look at how much you're consuming. Um, that's also maybe something to consider. I was actually, I was reading, but it was a while ago, so the, the facts and figures might have changed, but I was reading the most cost, or the cheapest uh, source of protein. And at the time, it was probably like four years ago, it was cottage cheese. Sure. So if you look at, you know, let's say, obviously cottage cheese, is, it's, it's about 30 rand for 250 grams or whatever the size is. But if you, 100 grams of cottage cheese, I think it has over 25 grams of protein. Whereas 100 grams of chicken has about 22 grams of protein. You spread some cottage cheese on a piece of bread or if you have, a, I don't know, baked potato, you maybe put cottage cheese on there to get some source of protein as opposed wow. to putting on cream. So there's certain things that you can make and cream is probably actually more expensive than cottage cheese anyway. So there are things that, and it will still be nice, you can still put your sweet chili with your cottage cheese and your potato and still have an amazing meal. And your porches. Yes, no, and then you put it on the, the side. Bread, um, cottage cheese, and porters, and you have a power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, no, so jokes aside. But um, from your experience, how important is it to um, to actually have a training plan? And would you recommend a personal trainer to guide you on that? I think for people, and it's more ladies than it is for men, are a bit intimidated sometimes to go into the gym. Mm. And I think maybe that's when a trainer might help, is that intimidation, because I've spent many p females that i've trained you know they say yo i'm actually i'm scared to go into the gym i'm scared to go to the weight section or I'm, i'll just go to the cardio section or I'll just stay in this corner you know because i feel like the guys are going to judge me or the other girls are going to judge me or the m old men are going to try to talk to me so i think a personal trainer in person might help with that mm -hmm. obviously take away that um you know that fear also maybe just if you do get a plan you know, you can do it with a friend. So let's say you do work with an online coach. That's great. It also obviously has to be the right online coach because some online coaches might just give you uh, a sentence of an exercise, what to do. And then you obviously, if you've never had no. any experience in the gym, you're not going to know what to do. So it depends obviously at what level the coach, you know, gives you whatever plan that you're going to be doing. So, you know, maybe the coach uses an app where they've got videos of the workouts and everything and that can help you. So in terms of, you know, understanding what to do and when to do, if, it's, if you're a first time person going into the gym, you're not going to have a clue. You know, if you've got zero experience about what to do, mm. you're not going to know, you'll probably just go to the treadmill, do some cardio and then you're just doing cardio and you might not see the goals that you're wanting, but you don't understand what to do to reach those goals. So mm. then obviously it is important to get a coach because it's someone to guide you in that direction and then educate you. I think that's also maybe the most important thing because, you know, a person that is a doctor is going to be able to retain information. So maybe a doctor is, I mean, a coach, an online coach is good for that because then they can instruct you and then you obviously have that knowledge going forward and then you maybe might never need a coach because you've learned from them. Jason, and what, what motivates you? So, Or who motivates you? Yeah, that's a difficult question, if I'm honest. I think... Or let me, let me rather rephrase. Is there different, like in different aspects of your personal life? So let's say in business, do you have someone that motivates you versus someone in, in, in maybe in training and sort of like your healthy lifestyle? And if it's a what or a who... Um, yeah, I maybe think if you don't yeah. mind sharing that. I think because we all have so many interests, we have you know people we aspire to or look up to in those different facets of our life. So, in terms of training, and I don't really I use when I competed, then I would say I more had you know people that I looked up to because yeah. I maybe wanted to be at that level. I wanted to maybe look like them or have arms like this guy, or whatever. Yeah. So at that time, there was definitely a lot of people I was following on Instagram. But I think it was also just more trying to be better than who I was the previous time I competed or the previous time I tried to look a certain way. So I think it's it's always because with every, everyone's health journey, it is very unique to each particular person. So that could also be negative in terms of wanting a body like somebody yeah. because their genetics, their makeup, their everything is completely different to you. So you never, I mean, no matter how similar your genetics are even, you'll never look like that person. So that know. could be detrimental to your own, you know, mental health or your own health journey because you're never going to reach a certain level that that person looks like. But there's certain things that maybe you can aspire to. So 
I mean, there's definitely on social media, I don't know personally, but I'm sure there's a doctor. Well, there are, I know in South Africa there are a few where he's a doctor and he looks amazing and he's a, you know, he's a, he's a GP, he's been on the cover of Men's Health. So there are people that maybe a doctor could look up to. Whereas, you know, that doctor can look like this and he's been on the cover. Yeah, you know? that's true. There, so you, there's certain people that you can relate to in that phase of your life. You know, maybe we all have different goals. So maybe someone that looks up to a doctor that ran the comrades. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, the, so, it's a, so I think in terms of that, that's great because you're that doctor was able to train for the comrades. I want to do that. But in terms of maybe I want to look like that person, maybe that not, might not be as beneficial, but it could also be, well, I can also look great and still be a doctor because that guy can do it. And if he can do it, I also want to be able to do it. So I think it's kind of just looking at where you are in your life at that particular point And, looking to be as maybe driven and determined and willing to make sacrifices another person in terms of looking after them, but maybe not looking up to them, you know, to be you. exactly like them. So what you're saying is the, the who motivates you might be somebody that's the number one, if I can call it that for lack of a better term, and to say, well, you know, understanding, being comfortable with yourself, but understanding that what it, what it took for that person to get where they are and, make that your inspiration to get to that specific place. Mm. Um, and the what might be something like discipline. You've mentioned discipline quite a, quite a couple of times um, as to, you know, maybe just watching something that motivates you for a certain amount of time. Discipline was that constant that, that, that took you, that took you through. Um, I know, and I'm going to put Vanner on the spot here. I know he's made use of Jester Fit and he's also used like the fasting program that you that you've offered. Um, that is, if you maybe want to share, you know, yeah. some of the some of the benefits of Jester Fit that you found, and you know, the value proposition, and and, and then we can close off there. Yeah. yeah. So I like to have a, a coaches in my life, um, depending on what I want to achieve. Um, so with fitness, I've had a couple of coaches before helped me out with training programs. Although I've been training for a number of years, but it's always nice to get guidance uh, to have an accountability partner um, that you can go back to and say, "Listen, this is what I'm struggling with. I'll help you keep track." Um, I basically was a client of of Jesse, I think a year or so ago. Um, <coughs> I must say one thing that that was, and I can compliment you on that. One thing that was. Um, unique from the program that I received from you as opposed to the guys that I've used in the past is on the diet um, it didn't feel like a diet to me um, because a lot of the diets that you get it's a fixed diet it's it's one way and that's the, there's, there's no um, option to deviate from it so they give you something this is what you have to eat for breakfast this is what you must eat for a midday snack this is what you must have for lunch um, there's no alternatives um, and a lot of the times that can get to you because it's, it, it feels too strict um, it feels yeah. like even if in, in, in the business environment where we run a very business, a, a busy schedule, it's not always possible for me to have that meal at that specific point in time. Whereas um, the program that Jesse gave me um, had quite a lot of options. And I actually revisited about two weeks ago. So I went back to see what options was there, what healthy snacks <laughs> was there. And, and one thing um, in particular that, was, uh, that I was completely surprised by is included in that specific meal plan was like Nando's as an example. So uh, twice a week I could have Nando's um, strips and rice, which is a very nice thing to have in there because if you are busy okay, and you forgot to prep a meal, then you can still go to Nando's and say, listen, this is what my week, this is what my schedule looks like. I might be too busy to have this particular meal at this point in time. Yes. So you can go to a Nando's as an example and have a, a chicken strips and rice. So I, I was very happy. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by the meal plan that I received. Um, I must also say the results um, that I got from the plan um, was really good and satisfying. Oh. Um, unfortunately, I didn't keep to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Yeah, so um, definitely it worked. Um, and maybe, Jesse, if you can maybe share with, with um, the listeners, what's the value proposition of, of Just a Fit and what do you guys have to offer to any individual out there? Not, not, not necessarily guys that wants to compete as an example, and if there's guys that want to compete, um, what different packages and, and value propositions do you have? I think that's exactly it. I do help people if they want to compete, but that's not my sole purpose. I don't want to, you know, as I do it, but I don't want all my clients to be people that compete. I want to work with 
everyday flawed people that don't want to have the same meal every single day. I no. want, because I followed those kind of plans in my competing days, I realized, you know, there were certain aspects of my life that I missed out on, things that actually looking back on, maybe I shouldn't have missed out on. And as no. you say, you know, the, the, the relative flexibility within it still helps you to be able to, you know, be busy and still see those results. So, you know, that's what I like to pride myself in is, you know, allowing people three to four options of a meal so that, you know, you maybe, let's say one day you, you have four diets in a week that you have to follow. It's not Monday to Sunday, now you have to go follow the same plan. Because that monotony and that's how maybe people fall off the, the wagon is being so structured and being so strict. I mean, nobody really wants to be like that unless you're going to compete, different story. But, you know, working with people that just want to make healthy changes, make healthy choices, be, you know, have more energy and just maybe lose a little bit of weight don't have to eat the same thing every single day. You can have relative flexibility and still see amazing results. So that's essentially what I pride myself in is, you know, helping everyday people, helping people that, you know, just want to see small changes, feel better in their clothes, maybe drop a dress size or two, maybe just, you know, have a wedding. I've actually had a lot of that recently. It's quite interesting. It's a lot of <laughs> a lot of girls saying, you know, I've got 12 weeks. I want to look my best for my wedding coming <laughs> yeah. up. So, you know, it's, it's those people that I like to help. And, you know, if honestly, I prefer helping and working with someone for two months and never having to see them again because I've hopefully have facilitated, you know, a growth and a knowledge within them that they can do it themselves for the rest of their lives. You know, oh, yeah. it, sh it should never be 12 weeks and then you fall off and then, you know, it takes you three months to get back on 12 weeks and then you lose that weight again. So it should be something that you can do 365 and it should be something that is a lifestyle, not something that is, you know, it ebbs and flows. I think that's the biggest thing. I think a lot of people... Um, want to approach like a coach or want to get guidance and say, listen, um, I want to diet as an example to look a certain way for a specific event. Um, but it's so strict to get there within 12 weeks because yeah. they will help you achieve it. It's possible to do it within 12 weeks, but it's going to be very strict. Mm. So you're not going to enjoy it necessarily. Mm. Um, and once you've reached that goal, after the 12 weeks, you're just going to go back. Full as normal. Of um, and I think the, 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 the goal is, and I think what everyone stri um, strives to, to achieve is to get to that point where you can maintain a healthy lifestyle throughout, look the same, um, be in a good mental health um, state, get enough sleep, um, eat healthy meals throughout. And I think that's the goal to achieve. And I think mm. it's definitely worthwhile getting someone um, that has walked those paths with a lot of people to give you that guidance until you are comfortable with it and then you can do it yourself. Yeah. Jesse, then... Um, how can how can people reach out to Jesterfit? So we've got an Instagram page for Jesterfit, which is at Jester underscore fit, or my own personal page. Um, I'm sure you can obviously just put it in the description of this um, podcast. Sure. You can DM my personal page. We've got a website as well. Mm. Or I'll just send you the link. You can put that in the description. You can yeah, DM, go on our website, submit a, a form, a query form, whatever, and we'll contact you. Cool. And yeah. Jess, thanks so much for your time. We really thanks appreciate it. Thanks for the value that you've added. Um, I th it was definitely a very valuable um, podcast. Mm. And I think all the listeners out here um, listening to this podcast would also find value in it. Um, if this is the first time you've watched um, an episode of Money Medicine, I want to encourage you to please uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel um, as well as on Instagram. Please share these episodes with your colleagues and friends um, if they might find value in it. And until next time, plan the plan.